U.S. Farm Report, a public information program brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation by members of the National Farmers Organization in this area and others interested in having American agriculture receive cost of production plus a reasonable profit. The American farmers and ranchers are building a brighter future for agriculture through the National Farmers Organization, the organization that awoke America and represents the leadership of agriculture. U.S. Farm Report presents the nation's dairy program with Ed Graff, director of the NFO Dairy Commodity Department, and Rick Avila, dairy commodity assistant. Here now is Ed Graff. There certainly are some problems that every farmer must recognize, especially in the dairy industry today. I have a magazine here, a leading farm publication, that would startle anyone that's interested in the production of dairy products. It says, butter for sale, 12 and one quarter cent per pound. Well, before an American dairy farmer could produce butter for 12 and a quarter cents a pound, we realized that you had just better quit. But this isn't the price that farmers receive, regardless of where this butter comes from. This is a dumping price. I have a chart here that I'd like to have you see, and maybe it will make it more understandable why this butter could be priced for 12 and a quarter cents a pound from a foreign country. Remember I said the farmer didn't produce it for that price. I have a graph here, and it says dollar distribution of South Dakota wheat. And immediately we may think that maybe wheat is something odd to be talking about on a dairy program. But notice that the price of a bushel of wheat in Rotterdam is $3.42 per bushel. Now this means the miller in Rotterdam will pay $3.42 per bushel for wheat, whether it's grown in Rotterdam or whether it's shipped there from this country. This bushel of wheat happened to be produced in South Dakota, and it was shipped to Rotterdam. And we have the charges on this wheat. It says down here, the local grain dealer received five cents for storing it. The transportation of the Gulf was 38 cents. Shipping to Rotterdam was 11 cents. And transportation to the warehouse was six cents. But there was an import duty of a dollar and 55 cents. That's the area in here. More than the South Dakota farmer got for the bushel of wheat. This money, this import duty, was paid into the European common market. That money paid the farmer in the European common market a fair price for the dairy products that he produced. And that that he had as a surplus was sent out on the world market, the dumping market price, the 12 and a quarter cents. Shall we try to compete on 12 and a quarter cent butter, or shall we do something about it? We can do something about it. First of all, the dairy farmers of this nation come together through an organization. And certainly in the NFO dairy program, we have been able to do something about this problem. And I think the biggest stride that the American dairy farmer made was when he used the holding action of 1966 because, again, I'm going to show you exact figures and prices that farmers received prior to that holding action. These figures on this chart are from a large Midwestern manufacturing dairy plant. And the years are given here 1962, 1963, 64, and 65, with the price of manufactured milk received by that producer in 62 of $3.46, 63, $3.48, 64, $3.51, and 65, 
and in 1965, $3.55. Over those four years, you will see that there was a total increase of nine cents per hundred on milk. Remember the holding action in 1966 that the dairy farmer participated in? An increase came about that year of 59 cents a hundred to this same producer. In 1967, the price increased to four dollars and 34 cents a hundred, an increase of another 20 cents a hundred. When this chart was made up, we had a 1968 estimated increase of 20 cents a hundred, which at the last check was 19 cents exactly. And it says a total increase of 99 cents. The 19 cents would have made it 98 cents compared to 9 cents in the four previous years. It means that the program that the NFO has, the NFO Dairy Bargaining Program, isn't a program that might work. It's a program that is working. It actually has increased the price almost a dollar a hundred. You will hear a lot of people that like to take credit for an increase in the price. And some, I like to use this term, that success has many fathers, but failure is an orphan. So everybody would like to take a credit for this increase. But remember, this is when NFO had the holding action, and our program now is proving that farmers can price dairy products. This is in the manufactured area. And Rick, I'd like to have you explain a little bit of why they have a problem in the class one market pricing milk under the old structure. All right, well, thank you very much, Ed. We've heard uh, different groups talk about the tremendous size of their organizations and what they've been able to accomplish, especially in class one milk. And I have several examples here on the chart. We see the Great Lakes Milk Federation, which covers about three or four states now, maybe five, which operates and has a total supply of seven and a half percent of the market. PMA, a very large group in Chicago, about four percent. Mid-America in, in Missouri and Iowa and areas in that, about three percent. Dairyman Incorporated now, which is merged with Great Lakes, which gives about another two and a half percent to this block of production. And we see that the block of production the rest of the production that is divided up into s very small groups. Now, I don't know where you might ship your milk in, as NFO people or as non-members out in this group, but when your co-op tells you that they were able to negotiate or get you a price for this 99 cents a hundred, you can see how divided and how unorganized this entire segment of the dairy industry really is. Now, in woven in each one of these groups are our NFO production. And you can see that if we would take and pull all the production together, that we then would have enough effect or be able to affect enough of the total supply to be able to effectively price milk, whereas any one of these individual groups are still too small. Uh, people in the industry tell us that it takes in a neighborhood of maybe 20 to 25 percent of the total production in the country to be able to effectively uh, have a tremendous influence or uh, influence on the price of milk. Now we in NFO operate over 45 states and uh, so you can see that we can have a much greater effect on being able to price and have an influence on the pricing of milk. At the present time we depending somewhat uh, upon federal orders to give us the minimum prices and uh, to get our farmers educated is the fact that this is only a minimum price throughout the uh, dairy industry and that uh, premiums can be negotiated above the minimum pricing structure. Also included but not uh, shown on this is uh, groups in the east which I work with primarily such as Eastern which handles about two and a half billion pounds of milk or in a neighborhood of two and a quarter, two and a half percent of the market. Very large group yet still singly not able to affect enough of the total supply to be able to price it. Dairyman's League is also handles about three, three billion pounds there in the East, C.P. Hood East, which is the largest independent bottler in the country, and yet not able, as within their own group, to affect a price increase on their own. 
I have a series of meetings set up for these areas in which we'll be doing some further negotiating with, with these independent groups uh, to be able to consolidate this entire block of production in the East and to show them what has to be put together in order to price milk. We need uh, consolidations and mergers and we need our farmers to be aware of what is happening and what taking place in these consolidations and mergers, which I'm sure Ed will discuss with some of the later pictures that we have. Certainly I wanted to go into it a little farther, Rick, but uh, I think that graph makes it easy to see that existing groups just are not large enough. And if you compare the volume that they could possibly have, and that is the volume that's shown there, they will change from time to time. But it certainly shows why NFO is the answer, because we're talking of 45 states right now at this time. And this move by these people, putting this block together among themselves is what NFO suggested in 1961. And we are going into that that I'd like to show you on some more of these graphs that we have to follow. I'd like to show this graph, not the graph, the picture you might say here, of the United States. And if you'll notice, down here in the left-hand corner, it says Associated Dairymen, designating the yellow section or this middle section on the graph. The Great Lakes, showing this section here in this color, and that's also extended down into Georgia and Florida and Carolina. And then a northeastern block. And by this, I'm trying to show a regional marketing structure. They are regional structures. Now, NFO has always said that there must be mergers and consolidations, and the dairy industry should stop competition among itself so that the farmer was actually suffering, and put them in themselves into a position of a marketing agency in common, whereby they could compete with the major handlers and be as big as they are, and the buyers, so they could do something about price. Well, we always think of the majority of the milk being under the cooperative structure, which it is. So here's another chart I'd like you to look at, and you'll see three circles, and it says co-ops on it. Now, really, what's the difference? Three circles where it says co-ops and the United States map when I speak of regional groups. Remember, NFO, as Rick said, is organized in 45 states today. I'd like to show you the power in NFO marketing. Within this structure, the regional structure, or the three circles and the co-ops. I want to draw a circle here. And if you can see that, you'll see that the circle encompasses part of all three of the other groups. In other words, NFO has production in all of the regional marketing areas. Phase two of the dairy program gives NFO the right to bargain for and make sales of the dairy products, not in one region, but over the entire United States. I might say that these circles and this picture of the United States is outdated already because NFO is organized in California and Washington and Oregon, Idaho, all these states where there is dairy production. And this production is being brought together into phase two of the dairy program. And remember this, that production brought together all over the United States is the power that NFO has in making sales bargaining for the sales of that production. So this is why it's so necessary for farmers to block their production together and then put it into this phase two of the dairy program or step two of the dairy program. 
This is happening in the West, the Midwest, and the East. And Rick, I know you're familiar with some of the meetings that have been held in the East, some of the meetings that have been held where they've talked mergers and consolidations, and many of these are happening. Maybe you could fill them in a little on some of these. Yes, I was in Pennsylvania and Ohio uh, two weeks ago where I visited with some co-op managers and some of our friends in the dairy industry, and they filled me in on quite a bit that's going on in, in their locality as far as the merger Especially in northern Ohio, you have about six plants that are putting together a, a merger, which we, in, which we in NFO feel it is needed uh, within the industry to bring this milk into economically sound plants, to unwind, you might say, the transportation problem that we have in the dairy industry so that the economies that can be realized in the dairy industry can be passed on to the farmer. One point I'd like to make is that in the consolidation and merger and bringing the industry together, the farmer thinks, well, automatically that uh, he's going to receive the benefits. But the thing of it is, if he isn't there to bargain and he isn't there to sit across the table and bargain for what economies can be brought about through mergers and consolidations, it doesn't necessarily have to be passed on to him. So I think this is a realm and a position that we take in NFO that we must be there to know the availability of the milk in an area, the plant structure, and the people involved, transportation, all these factors that are involved in bringing together sound economies within the uh, framework of our dairy industry. In Pennsylvania, we are seeing a resurgence of interest in pricing milk. The price out there is considerably higher than what it is, of course, in the base area of Wisconsin and Minnesota, uh, but they rely on the Minnesota-Wisconsin pricing series for establishing their class one price. So you see, we have much more to offer than any regional marketing area because we operate not only in the base area, but also in the area of bargaining within the locality of where the price in the east eventually is established for those people. So you see the, the complexities of the whole structure, the whole picture can be handled when you are a national organization much easier than when you're just a regional marketing order or cooperative. I'd like to mention this right at this time. Quite often we have calls coming into this office and someone will say, have you heard about this merger or that merger or this consolidation? And yes, we have heard of them, and we see them happening at a faster rate than ever before. Usually the caller says, is this good or is this bad? Well, of course, this is what NFO has suggested several years ago, and we're seeing it happen today. It's very good, but I like what you pointed out, Rick. What guarantee does this give the producer, unless he organizes to bargain? And the other point I'd like to make very clear is a giant is being created, a giant in the dairy industry. Would you think of buying one of the largest, most powerful tractors on your farm without a steering wheel? Would you think even though you had all that power blocked together, you could steer it or direct it without that steering wheel? A giant is being created. Would you know the manager? Would you know the board of directors? Who will represent you? NFO is the bargaining agent. NFO is getting into a position to market milk and bargain for the sale of that milk. That's the phase two program. A giant is being created. We'll control it. And I think Rick at some of the explanations at meetings that we've held very recently. A lot of farmers didn't realize this, that a giant was going to get going together out there because of the drive of NFO, and we're the ones that are going to control it. We're the ones that's going to guarantee that, that farmer a fair price from it. It's, it's very gratifying to have people within the industry call 
and discuss what NFO has really accomplished and why don't we take more credit for this or more credit for that. And uh, I think it's, it's to me, in the, in the time that I've been here with the international office, uh, very gratifying to talk to these people. And I'm talking about people within our industry. And I use that term, our industry, because I feel I'm very much a part of it, uh, coming out from a dairy farm in Indiana. The ability with which I see that this organization is growing and developing all across the country is, uh, is quite edifying to even be a part of it. We have many, many people who probably could and should be accounted for in as far as what we've been able to do in, in NFO. But the list would be too long to sit down and mention here this afternoon. I know exactly what you mean when uh, people in the industry do recognize that this bargaining and this widespread national bargaining is the key to pricing any agricultural production. In the dairy department, we know that there's no difference in bargaining for milk than there is in bargaining for meat or grain. Marketing, yes, there's a difference, but not in bargaining. NFO is that bargaining agent, that nationwide bargaining agent, that all of our dairy farmers today are recognizing and coming into and, and spreading this organization. So to any of those that uh, are wondering about it, some of these actual figures that we have should prove that NFO isn't about to work, NFO is working. Our dairy program is working. This means dollars and cents in the pockets of the American dairy producers. One of the things that has happened just recently in dairy bargaining and in our overall program is we're receiving many calls from the West Coast and the far west states to come out and get phase two of our dairy program started. I think probably one of the trips when I was out there and met with the general manager of a large association in the West, when he made this statement to me, he made it because of all of the NFO dairy producers throughout the Midwest and East. He said, we recognize what you people are doing. He said, we know the effect that you're having. We welcome you to come to this area. In other words, this points out that collective bargaining for agriculture, collective bargaining in the dairy field is being accepted. It's a popular term. It's something that the American farmer has waited for. He probably didn't even recognize it. So phase two of the dairy program, this second step in bargaining is very important. And when Dolan's Agricultural Service made this study and found that over 96% of the farmers believed in collective bargaining and thought collective bargaining was going to be necessary to solve this problem. We're seeing this tr uh, come true here in the national office, the calls from all over the country. And this is from class one areas and the manufacturing areas. And certainly the gains that have been made in the manufacturing area, we saw on the charts here, these same gains have been projected through the other areas into the class one market and the bargaining that we've done all over. It's very true, especially in New Jersey. I was talking to our marketing area chief in uh, New Jersey, and uh, he, the difficulty seems to be lessening quite a bit because we're getting through to the idea that even though their price out there, I think, is 673 on class one, blending out about 630, that uh, cost of production is still the important factor that we're trying to determine and establish in the bargaining that we're doing. Price alone or just what you, pri what you have to work with and to work back from, you might say, was the way we've been uh, developing our marketing. Our, we get the milk check and then try to stretch it through 30 days. That's the way it's been operating. But uh, the business of, of producing milk and of staying in business and getting new people in business is more than just the establishment of a 30-day period of being able to stretch a milk check. Right. It's, a, it's definitely a, a, a science and criteria that go into the development, milk markets, production, and all these things are, are vitally important to dairy farmers. And I think this is what we're 
developing with the educational series that we have to being able to get to into 2,000 or better counties with overhead projectors and with uh, giving them market information, uh, being able to do all these things over such a wide area is really helping to solve some of the problems in the dairy industry. When you mentioned being able to give market information, the service that NFO can give the producers today, I'd like to use another chart that I have here. It points out three steps that are going to be necessary in dairy bargaining. It says successful dairy bargaining is as simple as one, two, three. It is. Number one, block production together on phase two agreements. Block it together. This is true in all commodities. Number two, market through financially sound plants based on market information. What is market information? Through the phase two of this dairy program, all participants do have market information as to whether or not the buyer of your milk is in a sound financial position. This service is available to you, only to those that are participating in phase two. Along with that, an insurance program that insures from 100% to a partial insurance on your production. This is quite important. In four years, 2,470 some farmers lost their milk checks in the state that I'm from, Wisconsin. 13 miles from my home, they lost $60,000 because of plant failure. And number three, make sales under contract to Borden, Kraft, and so forth. All the buyers of our production. Contract sales. That's what we want as producers. That's what we want, whether we produce dairy, grain, or meat. Phase two of this dairy program will give you that. You have the structure, the structure in every county to block this production together. The power of phase two is what we all want. Put that production on phase two, and we will have contracts with an established price for the American dairy farmer. U.S. Farm Report has presented the nation's dairy program with Ed Graff, director of NFO Dairy Commodity Department, and Rick Avila, dairy commodity assistant. Members of the National Farmers Organization invite you to tune in again next week at the same time for more facts on agriculture and rural America which is a gear wheel in our economy that produces the majority of our nation's new wealth. The farm income pattern sets the true nation's prosperity level, and the National Farmers Organization represents new thinking and a new generation of agricultural producers. A brighter day for American agriculture. <laughs>